Welcome back to TEC Tube. I'm Ryan Holger and we are continuing our series on the Ecobee thermostats. Uh, this particular video is gonna help you with Ecobee stats, carrier core stats, Brian Housewise stats. We're gonna show you how to read and interpret a home IQ screen, uh, which is used for graphing data and trending and reporting on existing operating Ecobee core and Housewise thermostats. So let's pull up a screen and take a look. I'm currently logged into ecobee.com as a user on an actual account. For you guys that are doing Bryant and Carrier Stats, it would work the same way. It would look very similar. The core thermostat and the housewise thermostat have similar screens. So I'm gonna pick one of these guys to log into. So I got, I don't know, uh, 10 stats on my account here. I'm gonna pick one of these guys to pull up. So give me some basic information on here. And then if I click on full details, it'll put me into that actual stat. The Bryant and Carrier ones will work the same way. If I click on a thermostat, uh, it'll bring this stuff up. So for Ecobee, it's called Home IQ and has a little B on it over here. For Carrier and Bryant, it's called Housewise Energy Reports and Core Energy Reports. But it's all gonna end up looking like the same stuff when we click on it, all right? Similar information, so they all work the same way. So when I click on it, this is what I'm gonna see. I'll get, as a consumer, I'll get some information about how much I've saved um, versus had I not purchased an Ecobee core housewife stat, how I compare it to my neighbors, like this particular stat I picked because it's doing very well, or I didn't pick one that was doing poorly, a pretty good one. And then I can dive in and see more information. I can see my monthly reports, I can see my home efficiency. So let's click on one of these guys here. When I dive in, it takes me into the same menu over here on the left side for Carrier, Bryant, or Ecobee. Shows me my runtime versus if I had no Ecobee stat, I just ran at a fixed 72 degree set point how much hours that ran, how much energy it saved for me, and how much it saved for me since I've had this particular stat since I've owned it. As I dive deeper in community comparison, it'll give me some comparisons for people in my actual state. So I'm in Illinois, it's comparing me to other folks in Illinois that have their profile set up like mine. So they said that they lived in a single family house or a condo or an apartment or whatever I said, same number of square foot, same uh, number of people living there, uh, same kind of information, it compares me against them, all right? And the Ecobee core and Housewives customers are all compared to each other in, in that group. It's all treated the same. Once you have one of those three stats, you're in the same bucket of comparison, if you will. So smiley faces are good, frowny faces are not good. So I'm not doing as good as I could be doing over here um, with my home schedules, but I have most of my stuff overall is doing pretty good. But that's not really what I wanna show you guys today. I wanna dive deeper into some stuff here. Specifically, what I want to do is I want to dive into the graphs. This is one of the best things about these stats is being able to see all this information. So I have my information on here. Uh, up in the top, it's showing me what's happening with my equipment. So in my case, these orange bars are my heating run times. Uh, if I had cooling, it would be blue running there. If I had second stage, which I have not had because it's been mild out around here lately, I'd have another bar underneath this one over here uh, and my fan run time. If you scroll down just a little bit here, I can see I also have these graphs down at the bottom. So the white graph in this case is my indoor temperature. The orange is my heating set point. The blue, if I was in cooling mode, if I have a blue one, that would be my cooling set point. And the green is my outdoor air temperature. I can also come over here and click on humidity on the right side, and I'll get a similar graph for indoor humidity versus outdoor humidity and what my equipment is doing related to that. And if I had a humidifier, which I do not, I'd have a humidifier category over here and it would show me my humidifier runtime. I can also scroll through and look at stuff back in time, right? So I can grab this bar and slide it to the left and go look at stuff back in the fall. It'll take a second to go grab that data. So back then in the fall, I had this in auto mode. So I had both a blue and an orange bar, right? And you can see my indoor temp, my outdoor temp, my run times. And you can go back pretty far and go back to the summer and look at something. All right, so there's my summer scenario with my heating and cooling set points runtimes, whatever happened on those days. So that's kind of cool. I can see what happened in real time and see if things are not running the way they're supposed to be running. I can also on the left side over here, click on schedule and look at my schedule compared to what's actually happening in terms of temperatures and runtimes. I can look at the weather impact to see how the outdoor air temperature correlates to my heating and cooling run hours. So in this case, I only had heating running in, uh, in February, which was last month. So I have these orange bars going down. If I had cooling, I'd have blue bars going up. And this particular unit has two stages of cooling, one stage of heat. And down here is my daily outdoor average temperatures. All right, so the, the warmer it is, the less heating I happen to run in this case. 
I can also go back and scroll back and look at previous months. That was March, this is February, January. Let's go back to one that actually has some cooling on it. I don't know how far back this particular stack goes. I don't remember when we installed this one. Let's try August and see if we have data for August. Maybe this one's not that old. All right, September. So we installed this one in September. So you can see the cooling bars go up, heating bars go down. All right, you can see that as a function of outside air. And the last thing you could do with this home IQ is click download data. And they'll dump all this information into an Excel spreadsheet. You can do whatever you want with it at that point. Plus you'll get additional information. So I can just grab one day, I can grab one week, or I can go get a custom range. So I'm just gonna grab one week because that's just easy to do right now. And it downloaded a report for me, which I can open up. And I've got that report to throw it where you guys can see it. Right, so in this case, I get all this data over here. It tells me my system settings were, heat, cool, or auto, what mode I was actually in. What, if I was in a special mode, like in this case, some of you see say smart recovery on them, right? If I'm in the home away, wake and sleep, what my set points were at that moment, my current temperature at that moment, my current humidity, outdoor temp, wind speed from my weather station, cooling stage one or two on, heating stage on, fan, thermostat reading, thermostat humidity reading, and if I have one with a motion sensor, which this one did not, but if I have a motion sensor, it would tell me if that was in motion as well. So I got all that information there, I get it every five minutes. So there's a lot of stuff you can do there in terms of troubleshooting and finding particular problems and see if things are working the way you're expecting them to work. So hopefully that gives you a pretty good idea of how you could use that Home IQ screen. Uh, everything else on here is the same exact information you have on your thermostat. It's just presented in a little bit different manner. But from here on the website, I can still go and I can change my settings. I can go in and change my scheduling, all that kind of stuff from this website also, in addition to seeing the energy reports. But the energy reports are only available on the web browser, not available through the app, because there's just too much to see. So hopefully that helps you guys out and gives you an idea of how to look at this data from both a consumer standpoint and from a troubleshooting standpoint if you're a technician. And uh, if you could, subscribe to our channel and click on the bell so you'll be notified if any new videos come out, which happens all the time. Thank you.